Once again, good morning, Saints of Grace. Uh, welcome to our worship this morning. Today is the 11th Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, in today's service, we are going to, as part of uh, the offertory, the, the gathering of gifts, uh, we're also going to be recognizing the uh, ministry of Pam Walter uh, with, with, with us uh, as a, um, a professional member of the staff uh, here at Grace for 26 years. As most of you know, uh, Pam uh, uh, retired as of the beginning of, of August last week, and uh, we wanted to take uh, uh, time in the service today to recognize the many, many, many gifts that she has, uh, that she has shared uh, with the people of Grace uh, over the years. Uh, before we get started, I want to check and see if there are any um, uh, prayer requests in addition to those that are listed in the bulletin. Let me check first with people here. Any I prayer? have one. Okay, just one second, Pete. I can't see who it is back there. Is that? Oh, Lynn. Okay, thank you. Your Aunt Julie? June. Aunt June. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else here? Uh, Pete, go ahead. My friend and former shipmate of 55 years, Robert, who died last week of COVID-19 because he refused to get vaccinated. Thank you, Pete. I'm sorry for your loss. Yeah. Any other prayer requests? If uh, sir? There. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I'd like to give an update on my great niece, Flora. I would like to the congregation to continue to pray for her as things happen in the medical world. The procedure for her has been moved from August 3rd to August 19th. So she hasn't had that procedure yet. But if we can continue to keep her in our prayers, I know the family would appreciate that. Thank you, Greg. Mm -hmm. any, other, any other prayer requests? If not, then I would invite you to uh, join in our children's prayer and then we'll con continue with the confession and forgiveness. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving us. Thank you for our homes. Thank you for our families. Thank you for our church. Thank you for our friends. Please keep us all healthy. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
some shelter comfort past these walls your people send. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Gracious God, your blessed son came down from heaven to be the true bread that gives life to the world. Give us this bread always that we may live in, that he may live in us and we in him and that strengthened by this food, we may live as his body in the world through Jesus Christ, our savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading for today is from 1 Kings, the 19th chapter. Elijah went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough now, O Lord, to take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake, a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him and said, Get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank. Then he went in the strength of that food for 40 days and 40 nights to Horeb, to the Mount of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Ephesians, the fourth chapter. So then putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands, so as to have something to share with the needy. 
let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice, and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and live in love, as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Stand, you are able for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the father who sent me. And I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The gospel of the Lord. Jesus said, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Again, in John's gospel, he, he packs imagery from what we call Holy Communion, the sacrament of Christ's living presence among us. But what Jesus is also referring to in this teaching is not just that he gives us of himself that we may have life, but that he gives us to the world for the sake of the world. He gives us to be bread for the world. And we certainly understand that as Martin Luther teaches us in the explanation to the Lord's prayer, when we say, give us this, this day, our daily bread, we mean more than just 
the bread that comes out of the oven baked. Martin Luther helps us understand that daily bread is everything, everything that we need to thrive, not just to survive, to thrive in God's good creation, to thrive so that we can be a blessing to the rest of the world. Jesus feeds us of his own divine nature. It fills us. It overflows from us. It manifests itself in acts of love and of justice, of reconciliation, of caring, of compassion. All those things that Jesus taught his disciples and taught us throughout his ministry. Ways in which Jesus gave of himself for the sake of the world. Jesus now invites us into that cycle in which we are fed by the body of Christ so that we can, as the body of Christ, be out there in the world, meeting human needs. It's more than just telling people about Jesus and how to get to heaven. That's, that's a huge part of our ministry. And it's, it's central to our message that God so loves the world. But making people, making people know about Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior, as we do, that's not our goal. Our goal is to be the message that hopefully they will receive and grasp and comprehend that they will hear the message that they, as broken as they may feel that they are at any given moment, that they are passionately loved by us and by God. That's the central message of our mission. Yes, we hope to make disciples of people who hear our message. We hope that other people will gain that peace that passes all understanding, the peace of knowing that we are gods, that we belong to God now and forever. The peace that lets us, lets us face dangers, face challenges, to face it knowing that we're not going into any of this by ourselves, but we're always connected first to Christ himself. And connected, secondly, to each other. Sometimes even those of us in the church, those of us who are bread for the world, even we sometimes have challenges, sometimes have doubts, sometimes have Anger that blocks us from being able to experience that peace. And at those times, we are and we have to continue to be bread for one another. A place of healing 
for one another, a place of hope, a place to share both our fears and also our joys. Each of us has gifts to bring into this thing we call ministry. Today we celebrate the many, many, many gifts that Pam has brought into the ministry of grace through more than a quarter of a century. Remember Pam wrote, she thought that this was just a little thing that she was going to be doing on the side 26 years ago. Pam, we're so, we're so grateful that you have shared of your gifts um, with, is it three pastors now that you have served alongside? And interims, right. So, uh, uh, and, and uh, sharing your gifts as part of the ministry of this congregation has, has, been, uh, has been really an essential part of the, of the life of the congregation uh, for, that, for that quarter century. And uh, uh, we're all uh, very, very grateful for your gifts. Uh, in a few moments as we, uh, as we recognize, as we, uh, we're not gonna receive the offering today the way we used to, but in blessing the offering, we'll also, I'll also ask Pam to come forward and we will give thanks um, uh, liturgically for her, her ministry among us. Pam has been, and Grace has been, partly because of Pam, a sign of God's grace out in the world. A sign that says, if you're able to read it, that God loves you, and so do we. Pam has been bred for the world, even if that world is just our little world. We give thanks. We give thanks for Pam's gifts and for all our gifts, all of them joined together to make a strong, powerful statement and presence in our community. Reminding people that God so loves the world. Amen.
We join in confessing our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. Michael, do you have them? <clears throat> Let's join together. I believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. I believe in the Holy Spirit, Lord, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of God, and life everlasting. Amen. I thought Michael Peron had prayers today. He just reconnected. I'm sorry? He just reconnected. Oh, okay. One moment. All right, let's, let's start again. Okay, go ahead, Mike. On this 11th, hang on.
I think maybe while while we're waiting for uh, for Michael to uh, to reconnect, um, let me. Uh, I'd like to call Pam forward. Let's let's uh, do the recognition of her ministry. Then we'll, um, Michael, if you can hear, we'll. Uh, I'll ask you to do the prayers at the end, at the close of this uh, blessing. Pam, on behalf of Grace, I want to express to you deep, deep appreciation for your ministry, your, your faithfulness, your diligence, the way that you have touched individual lives, person to person to person, and have shared their stories, shared their journey, and in that way, ministered to them. You have been bread, bread for the world, bread for grace. Thank you for that. Let's pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the many, many gifts that you have given to Pam. We give you thanks that you have called her and she has responded to your call to share those gifts with grace and with the community around us. We ask you to continue to walk with Pam as you promised to, to do on the day you baptized her so that nothing, nothing in all creation can ever separate her from your love. In Jesus Christ, we pray, amen. Pam? Of course, I had to speak. <laughs> I know. Good morning. Long time no see. <laughs> I've been up here many times to talk about all the volunteer opportunities here at Grace, about an event I was hosting, or to thank you with a hundred thousand dollar candy bar on Volunteer Recognition Sunday for all of your service. Due to COVID restrictions and the humidity, there will be no candy today. Just a boatload of thanks and appreciation for all the years you supported me by believing that volunteering was fun and that you wouldn't have to accept a job for life. Well, maybe I wasn't always so truthful about that. We always tried to have fun though and hope that everyone would leave an event with a smile on their face and a fabulous prize in their hand. I was blessed over the years to feel the comfort and love you all gave me. And I truly miss so many of the faithful people who have passed away who when they were with us, set the example of service to grace for so many. It's time for a new chapter for grace and for me. The pages in this new chapter are blank, but I have faith that God will help us fill them in and with service to him and to each other. Thank you for being there with me, for laughing and crying with me and for providing me with the love of a big supportive family. You're the best. Thank you. I take the whole Someone mentioned fabulous prizes. <laughs> There happen to be several baskets uh, full of fabulous prizes up here in front. Of, I think a lifetime worth of fabulous prizes for you. Uh, there are also the the church council has has also authorized a um, I'll say sizable a, a, a very nice gift that will be coming your way. Mm -hmm. uh, and we uh, we just want you to know that you're loved. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, We've all heard you. 
Michael, are you available now? Yeah, we'll try it. I moved to my phone, so let's see if that works better. Okay, thank you, Mike. On this 11th Sunday after Pentecost, let us, let, let us offer our prayers to God, respond to each petition with the words, sustain your world, we pray. O oh God, bread of life, feed the baptized with your mercy. Uphold the pastor of Grace Lutheran Church. Bless his sermons, education, and direction as we enter into new ministries. Nourish us with hymns and prayers. Receive our prayers, O oh God, we pray. Sustain your world. O oh God, manna in the wilderness, protect the countless terrains that you have created. Tame the wild weather that human activity has generated. Grant healthy harvests around the globe and provide water and shade in each wilderness. Receive our prayers. O oh God, we pray. Sustain your world. O oh God, you are the staff of all life, the corn of life, the rice of life. Look with flavor on each area of the globe and open our hearts to the wild, wide world you have made. Show us how to feed those who hunger and bless world agencies of relief. Receive our prayers, O oh God, we pray. Sustain your world. O oh God, the sustenance of life, lead our country and all nations of the world out of decisive, divisive controversies and into pathways toward peace. Nurture in our elected leaders the desire for truth. Strengthen our efforts to combat the coronavirus. Guide school administrators as a plan for the fall semester. Receive our prayers. O oh God, we pray. Sustain your world. O oh God, our cup of goodness. Heal the sick and comfort those who suffer. Give a home to refugees and housing for those in need. Fill emptiness of persons who are lonely or rejected. Empty us of any prejudice. Save those we are for you. Gordon, Lori. Pam, Landon, Linda, Phyllis, Jim, Alice, Paul, Ginny, Loretta, Corey, Carl and Bev, Debbie, Eleanor, Dick, Jerry and Darlene, Eloise, Rick and Sandy, Rob, Ruth, Veronica, Joan, Jake, Leah, Georgia, June, Robert, Flora, and those we mention in our hearts out loud or to ourselves. Receive our prayer, private prayers, O oh God, we pray. Sustain your world. O oh God, food for our journeys accompany each of us on our ways and in mercy hear our personal petitions. Receive our private prayers, O oh God, we pray. Sustain your world. O oh God, join us in these celebrations this week. Birthdays of Cynthia Laletta, Dick Ullman, Glenn Grimpy, Karen Pfeffer, Justin Walger, Jonal Nermal. Christine Lunardi, baptisms of Tom Roth, Danielle Drellichars, Emma Reardon, Mary Ryan, and the anniversaries of John and Jerry Kiesling and Dan and Libby Ryman. Receive our prayers. O oh God, we pray. Sustain your world. O oh God, comfort all who mourn the death of a loved one. We give thanks for all the faithful who have departed and those we name here before you. With all the saints, we praise you for the bread of life that keeps us in your love forever. Receive our prayers, O oh God, we pray. Sustain your world. Into your hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us pray. Merciful God, as grains of wheat scattered upon the hills together together come one bread, so let your church be gathered together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. For yours is the glory through Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Our Lord Jesus Christ on the night he was betrayed took bread. When he had given thanks, he blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took, took the cup and when he had given thanks, he blessed it and gave it to them saying, drink of this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We join in the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Come and eat and drink the body and blood of Christ given and shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins.
May this gift of the body and blood of Christ strengthen us and keep us in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. First of all, God, as grains of wheat scattered upon the hills were gathered together to become one bread, so let your church be gathered together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. For yours is the glory through Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord's face shine on us and be gracious to us. The Lord look upon us with favor and give us God's peace. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, just a few announcements. Uh, the uh, first one I'm, I'm gonna uh, pass over to Bill Grimpy. He's got an announcement to share with us. Bill. Good morning. Uh, if you guys remember back in late 2019 into 2020, we were collecting uh, plastic bottle caps and lids uh, for the purpose of recycling them into a bench. And I just want to let everyone know that that has been done, has been completed. The bench is at the new school, uh, which will be for pre-K and kindergarten students called Prairie Trails Elementary School at Tech Kensington and Burning Bush. <clears throat> Excuse me, the, the bench is uh, just off the parking lot as you pull in off of Burning Bush. And um, there's a nice little plaque on there. It says this bench was created with bottle caps donated by District 26 students and families, along with the generous support from the Robert Bosch Tool Corporation. And the Bosch company was, there's an image of it, if you can see it. Um, 
then uh, the Robert Fox Tool Corporation was a company who took the bottle caps from us and did the actual recycling, made the, the bench. Um, there's going to be a ribbon cutting ceremony this Wednesday at the school and the public is welcome. And we're actually going to plant a tree behind that bench. So it's going to have a nice prominent spot uh, in the future of that school. So I just want to thank everybody again for their donations and for their help along with, uh, with, with uh, all your support. We were able to get this completed. So thanks again and have a great day. Hey, Bill, is that uh, at the former Parkview Montessori site? It is. So that built yeah. the, the school was completely gutted and renovated, and Sorry. it's going to be the first net zero energy efficient school in Illinois. Excellent. Oh, nice. And you're you're doing the groundbreak or you're doing the ribbon cutting tomorrow. I am. Well, I'll be part of the ribbon cutting uh, on Wednesday. It starts at 10 o'clock and it's open to the public. So we'd love to see anybody who'd like to come and see it. We'll be doing after the ceremony, we'll be doing tours of the school. So uh, if you want to see the inside of it and, and see the, even if you just want to see the outside of it, come and see, it's going to be a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, a few announcements. Uh, uh, next Sunday after worship is our Renewing Grace uh, uh, group that will be by Zoom. Uh, even if you have not been part of that group in the past, if you would help, if you would like to be a part of the group, it's an informal group that's just, helping to shape our, our reopening and uh, re-emergence into a more public ministry. And uh, if you would like to be a part of that uh, or participate in that group, uh, please uh, plan to log on after church. It'll be 11.15 next Sunday. Um, are there other announcements? Anybody online have an announcement to share? There are quite a few announcements in, in your bulletin um, or what you receive by, um, by constant contact. So, if not, I would, do we have a count of how many people were here today? 37. 37 people here. I'll show you some of their handsome faces. And some of the others also. <laughs> There's half. Pastor? Yes. Yes, I would just like to add that uh, the volunteer garden group uh, harvested another 67 pounds. So we are up to 134 pounds that went to Northwest Compass. That's outstanding. Uh, if uh, th those of you who are here, you probably drove by or saw the sign. Uh, there's a great big sign next to the garden right now that says, Donated a hundred, what was it? 137 pounds. Yeah, good, close enough. <laughs> it's just, it, it's wonderful. So uh, any other announcements that anybody has either at, either here or at home? If not, then go in peace, serve the Lord. Thank you. <laughs>